Hey class, so this week um, I'm going into detail about the history of Spanish Texas, especially in the 1700s. Uh, to give you an overview, I'm talking about why did the Spanish uh, finally settle Texas, which they really don't do until the early 1700s. So I'm gonna talk about that story. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the story of the creation of missions, especially in the San Antonio area. And I'm also going to talk about uh, the Indian diplomacy in Texas, the Comanche, the Lapan Apache, and the Colotecan Indians. So don't get fussed. You don't know about this, or you might know about it from other classes. I'm just giving you the big overview here. So uh, big picture, what you're learning about is Spanish Texas and its various aspects uh, during the late 1600s into the 1700s. Let me... Um, just right now, um, suggest very strongly to you that you look at the maps that I've posted uh, on Blackboard. I, I can't tell you how much easier it will take if you spend just five minutes looking at these maps. Uh, the first one I'll open, this is the view you see uh, on Blackboard. The first map is uh, that, and I'm opening this, it's the map of the missions of Spanish Texas and just Spanish Texas in the 1700s generally. So you'll see a lot and you can make that map bigger. You can see a lot of what I'm going to talk about um, in these podcasts, uh, San Juan Batista. And, and again, you don't know this yet. But uh, just glance at it, or you know what, maybe even better, uh, have it nearby as you listen to the podcast and just stop the podcast and, and look at the map. I, I just can't tell you how much it'll help you understand this story uh, if you look at this map. Uh, it, it, it'll make an incredible a different, a difference in a positive way uh, in your ability to understand the, the story that I'm telling about Spanish Texas. Um, now let me, there's another map, hold on here, let me go back to content, and the other map, it's under the Gwyn orientation, uh, which I'm going to click on now, and the Gwyn orientation uh, has a bunch of uh, material, um, so it's, it's a folder within the folder, the week two module folder, and it's a map of the Comancheria, and the Comancheria is the area that the Comanche Indians dominated uh, in their raiding area. Take a, take a second to look at that map as well, uh, especially when I start talking about the Comanche. Just have it side by side. I think you can open up two windows on Blackboard or you can just cut and paste the URL. Just let me just again tell you or stress that if you look at these maps, it's gonna make the story I tell so much clearer. Right. Uh, this is an instance of a uh, picture being worth a thousand words. OK, so just to go over uh, what I'm presenting this week, uh, the map of the Spanish missions, which I just showed you. Then there's a folder. It's the Gwyn orientation. Gwyn is the author of the book uh, Empire of the Summer Moon, which you're uh, you're reading the first sections of that <laughs> for this week. A couple of chapters. It's on the syllabus. It's got uh, the the it's got a review. Uh, I, I give you an oral discussion, uh, an orientation of uh, the Gwen book right here, uh, just so you have a sense of what it is I'm looking for. So you listen to that. Um, the maps of the Comancheria, um, and here's another map of where Texas missions were. Uh, you might want to take a look at that real quick. And let's see, oh, here's a cool image of a uh, 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 Comanche hunting buffalo uh, from the 1830s, which again, I think kind of, you know, just uh, uh, gives you a sense uh, or helps bring, I think history can be kind of dead to students because it's in the past and these people are all gone and who cares and blah, blah, blah. But to the extent that you can put your mind in the past and realize that, that what was going on was extremely interesting and very, very dynamic. Uh, if you can create kind of a dimension in your head where, where for the past and what happened in the past, especially when it comes to Texas, I think those of you that don't like history will find uh, this course so much more interesting than you would otherwise. Now, you know, there's some of you that will never find it interesting, that it will always be boring. 
but that's, I get it. You know, I'm like that in math and science. So I, I understand what it's like to be kind of um, um, in opposition, I guess, to a subject matter. But um, if for those of you that can kind of open your minds to the story, because it's stuff that really happened, it's super dramatic, you couldn't really make it up. Um, and also it gives you just more of a sense of what it's like just driving on I-10 uh, or wherever you drive, 35 or 90, uh, whatever. Um, it just gives you a deeper sense of, of the history of Texas. It gives you a thicker sense, a more kind of archaeological sense uh, of the past. Um, which is, I think, really one of the cool things about studying history. Um, um, you can kind of understand the ghosts of the past and, and how they're still with us today. Okay, so there's that. And then there's a long pod podcast lecture, uh, which I'm clicking on now. And the podcast lecture has a, a detailed outline uh, which, again, I would print it out and I would have it beside you as you listen to the podcast, unless you, I guess, listen to it in a car when you're working out. But I would, you know, I'd have the um, I would have the detailed outline that I post. I'd have it nearby you because, again, it, it creates kind of a, a you get a sense of the narrative of what I'm talking about. It also has some of the dates. Um, and anytime I put a date on an outline, it's something I want you to know. It gives you some of the names, uh, many of the names, if not all the names are very unfamiliar, uh, to most of you anyway, unless you had a really exceptional Texas history teacher, which I'm sure some of you did. Um, so yeah, I would print out the outline that, uh, is attached to the podcast. And again, I'm going to, uh, attach that same outline to the announcement when uh, I post this module. I would print it out. I just think it makes your life a lot easier and uh, you can start getting a sense of the keywords that uh, I'm looking for. Um, so like three, you know, a couple of tips. Look at the maps that I posted, I print out the outline. Let's see what else do we have here. So long, uh, the uh, you might also listen to the podcast if you can. You might want to listen to it in a couple of sittings instead of one long sitting. Um, I just think it might help. I try to make it interesting. And I think I've been pretty successful over my career in making these podcasts interesting. But it is quite a bit of information. So if you can, if you can just listen to it in kind of smaller chunks than one long one, I, I don't know if that may not be possible for some of you. Uh, I just think it will make it a lot easier uh, but you know what? You learn the way you learn. Um, I, I just I know you have a lot of other um, classes and other responsibilities in your personal life. Uh, but if you can try to break up the, the podcast into small bite sized pieces. And again, I, I really urge you very strongly to print out the outline that I post here. And then the last thing I want you to listen to is an interview with Gwen. Uh, it's a 26 minute interview from the NPR um, um, uh, show, Fresh Air, fantastic interview show um, um, on NPR. And you'll get to hear uh, Gwen and his take on the Comanche, and it'll give you a bit of an overview. Now, some of the stuff that he talks about, about the Comanche, we won't talk about for another couple of weeks. So don't, uh, you know, I'm not going to test you on stuff that, that, you, I'm not uh, I'm not going to test you on uh, material that he talks about that we're not talking about this week. And but what the Gwen book does, it gives you an overview of what he thinks about the Comanche and kind of his take on the Comanche. And that's what I want you to glean from this. So don't, you know, go nuts taking deep notes uh, from the Gwen interview. Just get a sense of his approach uh, to the Comanche world what he was thinking about when he was writing this book and what he's trying to get across in this book about, as you'll see when you listen to this podcast, this inc incredibly powerful indigenous group that controlled uh, maybe over half of Texas from the 1720s until the 1870s. Okay, so that's my orientation for this week. Uh, as always, uh, if you have any questions, uh, email, email me at patrick.kelly at uh, patrick utsa.edu. And um, yeah, I hope you can um, 
enjoy this. I, I just think the story is really fascinating and it's not often told. The, sport, the story of Spanish Texas, the story of the Spanish and the Comanche, the various Indian groups and the Spanish missions. Um, I think a lot of you, the majority of you, but sadly not all of you, will find it very, very interesting. If I'm not clear about something or I've confused you, please don't hesitate one second to reach out to me because if you're confused, um, somebody else is confused. As you can probably hear, I'm being texted. A friend of mine wants to go out and have dinner sometime this week, so I'm going to end this podcast now and answer her. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Stay in touch.